In this Introduction to Synthesis Explorer video, we're going to look over Synthesis Explorer, which is one of the two main items in Reaction Explorer, the other being Mechanism Explorer, where there's a bunch of videos already that you've looked at, hopefully, on how to do that. In Synthesis Explorer, you're going to have a target molecule. So here we have this target molecule. That's what we have to synthesize. The object of Synthesis Explorer is to show you how to do synthesis problems. You'll be given a series of reactants that you can use. So here's all your reactants. A series of reagents you can use to get this target molecule. So within Synthesis Explorer, you have three different columns. Unlike Mechanism Explorer, where you're drawing arrows and using the Marvin Sketch palette, here what you're doing is just picking chemicals and mixing them together to get the product. So you're trying to figure out how am I going to make this product starting with these different chemicals I have here and these different reagents. Now usually what happens here is they will give you a line. You see this line here? And that tells you that your starting material is really anything above that line. There's more chemicals here below the line, but you can really focus on above the line. Then you have your list of reagents. And Synthesis Explorer is really something for free exploration. You can initially just pick some chemicals and start mixing them together and seeing what happens. So if we take this chemical and mix it with sodium hydroxide and we can see, okay, well that's what's going to happen. You can click that product of that reaction, mix it with another reagent, see what happens, and you can just start seeing how chemicals react together. This is a great fleet free exploration tool just to see well, what happens if I take this chemical and mix it with this chemical in the presence of a solvent and you can just kind of get this free flow of how these chemicals come together to form products. So you can see that we're forming there. Now all these are not leading to our product here. This is just kind of a free exploration. And that's what, what happens often in Synthesis Explorer. You have your list of reactants, your list of reagents, and your target product. Now sometimes you may right away see, okay, I can see how I'm getting my target product. Sometimes it may take a little bit of effort. What often students should do is um, on paper write down how they may synthesize that. So kind of do a retro synthesis on paper to figure out how to get that product. But sometimes you just kind of click around and explore. You can always click the undo last step if you want to undo the last step or clear all if you just want to start from scratch. Now if you look at this product you see how there's one, two, three, four carbons, three in a row, one coming off. So you look at these different ones and you see well I need something similar to that. One, two, three in a row, one coming off with a leaving group. So I click that if that leaving group can leave and make a double bond by using something like a base or this base, one of these two bases, then we can get to our product. So if you click that base, you see here you get a mixture of products because you get a mixture of SN2 and E2. If we undo the last step and then go with sodium hydride here, we get the same correction that you got the product correct, but we only get the one product here. Sodium hydride being a little stronger base gives us a better elimination. But the key from this is what you want to see is that you have these reactants, you have these reagents, and you have your target molecule. And you want to just start mixing stuff together to get towards your final product. As you do that, as you do a free exploration, so we're going to take this and mix it with sodium hydroxide and click generate products. If you have to do multiple steps, you can just click the product of the last step and that will become the reactant of the first step. 